Let's begin with the market action and more pain for the bulls. Weak China data and a ratings agency warning about the banks set the tone for a downbeat session. Joining us now to discuss is Paul Hickey from Bespoke Investment Group and Phil Camparelli from J.P. Morgan Asset Management. Good afternoon to you both. Phil, you're here on set. Mm -hmm. want to get your thoughts on the market yep. at, at these levels. I mean, the S&P closed right near session lows, uh, down about 1.2 percent. Um, we could talk about the weak data coming out of China. We can talk about more concern around the banks, but we can also talk about yields. Yep testing the October highs. Yeah, so the yield story for us is probably the biggest risk. It has to be because, you know, there's you get to that 420 level based on two things. Either inflation isn't cooperating or growth is cooperating. And it's a growth story, Morgan. So that's very, very different from where we were when you said test the October highs. Last October, we were between 6 and 8% on inflation. People worried about inflation back then. Now it's a story of, okay, now it's almost impossible to get two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth with jobs pulling back this year. The recession is off the table. And then the 4.2% yield hitting that back in October, I think that makes some sense. One more thing. I don't think the Fed really has any, any um, kind of need for the 10-year Treasury to fall because of the housing market. They really need a seven and a quarter percent mortgage rate because the last thing that they need is a reignition of something like owner's equivalent rent that can create just a, a, a another bad story on inflation. So I think that story. But again, this is a high-class problem because of the growth story. It's very, very different from where we were last year when inflation was still between six and eight percent. Yeah, Paul, I want to get your thoughts on this, um, especially because you've start to see this narrative uh, trickle into this mark into the market of not just the possibility of a soft landing but also of no landing which might actually put the Fed in a conundrum yeah no I mean I, I think when you to Phil's point the biggest uh, issue I think for the market in the short term here is the increase in interest rates uh, staying higher for longer uh, that that's gonna weigh on things in the short term here but you know you just have to take a step back also we're in the month of August, historically weak period of year. Towards the end of July, investors started to get offsides. We saw what was some extreme readings in overall um, market strength. Uh, the NASDAQ 100, 25% above its 200-day moving average. The S&P 500 overbought since Memorial Day. The NASDAQ overbought since Cinco de Mayo. Five-month winning streaks for the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So these are all... Uh, factors that led some investors maybe to believe that the market could only go higher here and coupled with the weak seasonality i think uh investors getting a little bit of a reality check which is good for the market overall longer term though what you have to remember is these types of extreme readings we've seen in overbought levels are indicative of bull markets and not bear markets and so i think from a long-term perspective you see a short-term pullback which is healthy here uh and as I said last time, we don't know where the market is going to be in the short term, but we're pretty confident that it's going to be higher by the end of the year, and we still feel that way now.